Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are, just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be lifted. I we worship you. I bless your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. opportunity to be gathered in his presence. We bless the name of the Lord because he's the almighty God and we're here to pray. There's a faith clinic. Please, I need the keyboard. Um, 
the mm -hmm. Babylon. Uh, we're here to pray and we must pray because uh, we ought to pray and faint not. In this season and the times that we're in, uh, nobody should even advise us to pray because that's about the only way we can survive in prayers, in prayers. Bow your head and begin to bless the name of the Lord that this um, session of prayers will not also be counted as one of those prayers, but it will rather turn to testimonies for us. Father, we thank you because in your name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All right, there's Faith Clinic and basically it's about prayers. And this prayers is coming forth with faith to mix with our request with God and we'll trust that God, as always, always available for us. And then we will be able to pray, you know, and then we'll trust that he will make these prayers come to place shortly in the name of Jesus. Um, the session I'm, I'm continuing is praying with the scriptures, or so praying the scriptures as it is. We must understand that in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible said that the word of God is sharper than two edged swords. And so it calls that we have that understanding of sending these swords. You, you don't find sword when there is peace. You find sword when there is war. And we live in a life that we do not even have a control over the things that happen to us. So we can only call forth such powers, you know, with prayers. John chapter 1 verses 1. John chapter 1 verses 1 explains clearly that the word of God is God himself. So it's that time that we must, you know, decree and declare of God's word. And there's something important I need to also quickly run us by before we start praying tonight is the importance of prayers. Um, you see, when you stop praying, you, you will start misbehaving because you lose path of life. When we stop praying, we start making poor choices in important matters of life. When we stop praying, we become serious almost with everything around us because we, we've left dependency on God. When we stop praying, we start losing our value. When we stop praying, we start losing opportunities, new opportunities that, you know, profess itself, especially at the point of prayers. When we stop praying, we lose spiritual reception, spiritual receptors, and become carnal. We begin to get a lot more driven by our carnality, by our desires, by our lust. And that's because we've stopped praying. When we stop praying, we lose inspiration and excellence. And we start making a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes. And that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. When we stop praying, we lose freshness and we start decaying. You know, this decaying does not happen overnight. It takes time. You know, gradually, just start finding out that you're rusty. I mean, for the musicians, they will understand what I mean. When a bass guitar player says, look, I'm getting rusty, it means that you can't do the things you used to do. When you stop praying, you start losing ground. It thinks you already have firmness. But when you start praying, you start when you stop praying, you start losing ground. When you stop praying, you start losing things. They may appear to you physical or spiritual, but you've discovered that things are really not in your possession as it is. When you stop praying, you start seeing everyone as an enemy and fake, including even your own destiny helpers. Your destiny helpers will not appear to you as the people that can always help you to put things to when you stop praying. When you stop praying, you start hiding because you cannot confront the things. The Bible says sufficient is the evil of the day thereof. So it means that whether you like it or not, evil abides. But then with prayers, we become victorious over that. When you stop praying, you stop seeing the value and beauty of life and then begin to contemplate depression, oppression, suicide, as the case may apply. And that's basically because you stopped praying. I challenge you, my brothers and sisters, the Bible even gave us a clear understanding and injunction of prayers. It says, men always ought to pray and not to faint. When you stop praying, you stop seeing the value and the beauty of life, as I said earlier. When you stop praying, you start unnecessary competition and strife. 
everybody around you becomes a competition. <laughs> That's not the right thing because you lose the fact that, you know, timing comes from God. When you stop praying, you become more susceptible to witchcraft and all forms of demonic attacks. Because when you pray, you, you are like a hot fire. It would be difficult for any form of flies to perch on you. When you stop praying and you stop reading the Bible, you begin to listen to messages of God from men with a contemptuous attitude because the doubts in you begin to increase. There's no vacuum. You're either here or there. If you're married, when you stop praying, you begin to think of divorce. As much as you know that God hates divorce, it is because there's a lacuna somewhere. When you stop praying, your light becomes to get dim and eventually may turn into darkness. When you stop praying, you start comforting yourself with TV experiences and rather than fellowship with God and with men, which is very important. When you stop praying, everything including nature starts fighting you because you have already become vulnerable even to the devil. Anytime prayer stops, it is quickly replaced and overtaken by a wrong habit and spirit because nature abhors vacuum. Nature abhors vacuum. If you're not growing, you're dying. There's nothing like stagnancy. The word stagnancy does not work with men. So we must watch it. We must pray. Even if you don't feel like praying. Because prayers or praying is not a feeling. It's an injunction. It is a commitment. And I pray that as we pray tonight, that God Almighty will bless us and open our hearts and we'll pray effectively. Just like the Bible says in James, that the prayer of, an, of a righteous man availeth much. In John chapter 10, verses 1 to 6, in John chapter 10 verse 1 to 6 it talks about Jesus the true shepherd and so as believers hearing God speak to us is our right it's not it's not just a privilege because you have become a born again Christian it becomes a right that you and I must exercise at every other time we can now know his voice to distinguish it from the other voice it gives us the spirit of discernment to identify his voice over other voices of deception. A time like this where there's so much deception, you need to be sure of what you're listening to. It's important at these times to hear God and avoid the spirit of error. The more we study the scriptures, the more we will tell and let his power flow through our lives and we'll become better. And we'll be able to hear clearly, discern and obey God's voice. You're going to pray with us tonight and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight, restore my hearing, restore my discernment, restore my sense of judgment. May I not judge things carnally or after flesh, but after the Spirit of God. Come on, open your mouth and declare that tonight. Say, Father, restore my hearing, restore my discernment. Let me be able to have the spirit of the understanding of the times like Issachar the and then the children of Issachar. May I not judge things from the carnal perspective always or after the flesh or after lost but let the spirit of God always lead and guide and guard me even in this time. Father I decree O oh Lord that my hearing is restored my discernment is restored my sense of judgment godly sense of judgment restored because this time it is most needed father we thank you because you enable us to do much more in the name of jesus christ we pray amen in ezekiel chapter 47 ezekiel chapter 47 verses three to six it talks about the living waters it talks about the healing waters and the trees. It says, and when the man, Ezekiel chapter 47 verses 3 and 5, I'll read that very quickly. It says, and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters. And after he measured a thousand, 
and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. We're going to redirect this as it concerns us today. And we're going to pray tonight. Say, Father, in the name that is above every other name, tonight, restore my spiritual altitude. Now, the water level came from different levels. It came from different levels to the point that he could not pass over. He could not swim over. We're going to lose that at a spiritual altitude tonight. We'll say, Father, in the name that is above every other name, restore my spiritual altitude. Cause me to soar higher and higher as the eagle would do. Cause me to go deeper and deeper in the knowledge of you, Jehovah. Cause me to blaze from your glory to glory and to glory until the revelation of God's glory. Open your mouth and declare that. Just as it happened in Ezekiel, the water level was growing to the point that it could not pass over anymore. We can use that to connect to the spiritual altitude. We can grow deeper. We can grow stronger. We can grow higher. We can blaze from glory to glory because Christ is on our side. Open your mouth and declare that, Father, in this season, oh Lord, cause that I grow deeper, cause that I grow higher, cause that I grow wiser, cause that I grow richer, cause that I grow better in all ramifications. In the name of the Lord Jesus, cause that I blaze from glory to glory. I will not have a better yesterday. I will not be referred to yesterday because it was I was important. No, I will be relevant today. Speak to yourself. I'll be relevant in my sector. My altitude in the spiritual will navigate. My altitude in the physical will navigate. My altitude in the secular will navigate because we're children of light and we're the soul of the earth. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In James chapter 1 verses 19 to 20. James chapter 1 verses 19 to 20. I read that very quickly. It says, Where of my beloved brethren? Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. That the quality is needed in times like this. Pray with me tonight and say, Father. In the name of Jesus, tonight, stabilize my emotions. <laughs> stabilize my emotions. Stabilize my feelings. Do not let me be rash in my decisions. Do not let me be rash in my speeches. Do not let me be rash in my actions. Do not let me act irritationally. Do not let me be unguided in all my acts and my deeds. Come on, open your mouth and declare that. People are already depressed. People are already tense. If you go on the streets, you discover that people react on almost nothing. But as Christians, we are expected to be guided. We declare, O oh Lord, in this season, O oh Lord, our emotions are guided. Our uh, uh, the expressions are guided. Our decisions are guided. Our actions are guided. Our speeches are guided. Ah, we will not act irrationally. We will not be unguided in our thoughts because we have Jesus who is the perfect example unto us. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. What's the pray? In Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 to 28. Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 to 28. This is a story that talks about Jacob wrestling with God. I read very quickly and he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God. Okay, as a prince, hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. This, that's like in the King James Version. But what we're saying here is that he was able to wrestle with God and God changed his name we should stop pretending in order to let God work in our lives in fact, that's a lot of mistakes a lot of us do pretending to God as though God does not know us we must stop pretending in order to let God 
work in our lives. Jacob was a supplanter, a swindler, a trickster. He was a yahoo yahoo if you have to look at it at today's stir. But by the time he met God, he opened up himself. You have to be broken to be blessed. You have to be broken. You have to have a contrite spirit. Only then can God have his way in your life. Joseph was no, I mean, Jacob was no more a supplanter, but he became a contender with God. Hallelujah. You see that transition. He was no more a supplanter, but he became a contender with God. You're going to pray with me tonight and say, Father, in the name that is above every other name, tonight, give me a new name by the reasons of what you will do in my life. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, come on, declare that. Give me a new name by the reason of what you were doing in my life. Change my name to suit your work in my life. I mean, Abraham was so blessed that we had to start calling ourselves children of Abraham. Come on, open your mouth and declare that. Father, change my name to suit the work and the blessings that you have in my life. In the name of Jesus. But thank you because you will do absolutely more to in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Job chapter 5, verses 12 to 13. Job chapter 5, verses 12 to 13. It says, He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He took out the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of, of the forward is carried headlong. This is about tiring with God and the benefits that comes with it. Pray with me tonight and say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, this night, this, the wicked counsel and the wicked agenda of hell, even in this COVID-19 pandemic, there, there's a lot of manipulations. There's a lot of things that are not exactly clear. Say, Father, cross their powers. Terminate their assignments and their operations tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree and declare this evening, O Lord, that you will cross their powers. Terminate the appointments. Let everything they have planned. I mean, we heard clearly that they expected bodies to be littered on the streets in Africa. But God has disappointed them. Just the same way God has disappointed them. Even in our lives and in all that concern. God will destroy every wicked plan of the enemy. Once they gather, the Lord God Almighty will scatter them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. As we round off. We'll take 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23 as a round off. And this is about obedience to God absolutely. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23, the Bible says, Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. But the Lord don't reject you and I even in this generation. But the Lord don't turn his back against us even as we move on. Pray with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, take away the throne of any king, take away the throne of any governor, any commander, any president, any minister or leader who has rejected the word of God. Let Jesus reject them and overthrow them in the name of Jesus. We decree that in that atmosphere, the God will be absolutely in charge. There is only one way and that is his way and that's God's way. It is all or nothing. It's nothing less is acceptable. So Jesus is not just the Lord of our lives, but he will become the Lord of all that concerns us. Begin to put our prayers to end. Begin to bring your prayers to a close. Father, we decree you, God, that you will give us the right quality this season. You will give us the right mind to tarry with you this season. You give us, oh Lord, the right expression of obedience absolutely to you because you're Jesus and you're the true shepherd. Begin to bring your prayers to close. Father, we thank you. We we'll give you all the glory. Blessed be your wonderful name, O Lord. Glory and honor be ascribed. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And so, Father, all of our prayers and supplications and petitions are before you, God. You've promised us that if we are here to pray, you are always there to answer. Let these answers come speedily. Enable us even in this season, O Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
Thank you. Um, we'll bring you God's greatness, the camera greatness to everyone watching. This service happens every Tuesday and Thursday on our social media platform. On this same platform, I'm sure um, the social media handles are going to be scrolling on these device that you're using shortly so you want to see what it is and then you flow follow with us but on Sundays our service is old in church well we're back to church so there's live church services now happening every Sunday the three services actually the first one is the youth church that starts at 7 30 a.m. for the youth church and then the main service starts at 9 15 a.m. And also 10.45 for the second service of the main church. Please join us and we, you will be blessed. Every other announcement will be run through our social media. Please ensure that you're following us so that we can run all through that. We also encourage you to give your offerings online. Uh, I'm sure the account teachers will also scroll through the device. Please ensure that you give your offerings and then pay your tithe because the blessings of Titus are secured and the blessings of those who give offerings is sure that they won't be in sufferings praise the lord thank you very much for joining us this evening let's bow our heads for those of us who are giving online father we pray that for all the offerings that have been given lord and those who have been consistent with this lord let the blessings and the showers that come from open heavens be bestowed upon each and every of us in the name of the lord jesus thank you father for accepting us in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you very much. May we share the grace as we bring this service to a close. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's going to have some message for us all the days of our lives that we are the dwelling house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless you.